afternoon, your highnesses, excellencies, dignitaries, and members of the ABLF network and all of our wonderful guests today. My name is Resham Katecha. I'm a policy and strategy specialist based in London, and I am absolutely delighted to be here for this third session in this series. The man I'm about to speak to requires no introduction, but I will give him one anyway because it is such a fantastic introduction to be able to give. GP Hinduja is an Indian-born British billionaire businessman, the co-chairman of the Hinduja Group, an Anglo-Indian multinational conglomerate headquartered here in the UK with businesses and offices all around the world. The group is present in 11 sectors, including automotives, oil, banking and finance, IT and many others. And GP, along with his brothers, are known as the most successful businessmen here in the UK and globally. So with that, it gives me great pleasure to introduce GP and to ask um, the first question on lots of people's minds. How has COVID and the situation affected you and how have you and your business group manage the challenges uh, across 11 sectors, given the volatility and difficulties presented by COVID? COVID-19 has proved that whether he's a scientist or a doctor or a politician or a ruler or anyone with billions has no power or authority sure that that makes total sense it is a good lesson for all of us to learn and keep away from arrogancy from anger ego vengeance revenge all these things one should understand that the power is somewhere else you may be a billionaire or you may be a ruler or you may be a politician with a strong power if you see covid 19 has taught a lesson to all of them hmm, that you are nobody whatever nature wants hmm, that has been happening and to your question that how have we faced with this this has not been the first challenge to us the group is existing for more than 100 years where we have seen many such challenges in life like plague malaria flu then you had world war one world war two now when these challenges came the principles and the values which our parents left for us have saved us and the five principles are very simple one is that we like to work to give nothing belongs to us our parents taught us that everything belongs to everyone in the family but nothing belongs to anyone and this money what we are earning we have to see how we go then we have to act local think global that is how we have spread it in 48 countries and we have uh, over 150,000 workers the more and more we expand and give uh, work to more and more unemployed people, this itself is a service to the society. The biggest sufferers in the world have been the poor and the needy people. The rich man has survived in one way or the other, but not certain about his uh, COVID-19 night not being attacking him. COVID-19 has been for all religions, for all societies, for all level of people. God has been kind for us that we sustained everywhere looking at the challenges and the difficulties what we had. 
and we believed that even in this challenges what new things can be done what there are to learn and if you see after these vaccines also which have been ready and are going to be introduced although we are positive but we never know what will be the impact of this but we have to think always positively so there is nothing to be concerned one has to take this as challenges face the challenges and once you have faced the challenges you get the real happiness in life and you are surviving only to get happiness and happiness come from service to the society and also for facing the challenges could you tell me a little bit more about your philosophy and the hinduja group's philosophy around philanthropy and the work you've been doing over covid we are in development of the rural areas we are wanting to see what can be done to help the society in whatever way they have a need for it for example in covid-19 we did number of things to help the people who were in need and fortunately all the family members the brothers they think alike on these things and i think this is what uh, god is helping us and whether even uh, on the vaccines we have been supporting the different institutions in meals we have been supporting to the poor and needy who are unemployed and who cannot meet with them we have been trying to see wherever whoever is in need of what where we can be helpful we have done our best our foundation is doing good my daughter rita she has a foundation mukul madhav she is following really my late father's principles very strictly what lessons in leadership and business could you share with our listeners today about your takeaway of how leaders can be resilient through volatile times in my opinion firstly it was a good lesson for the leaders that whatever powerful they may be the ultimate power is somewhere else i believe strongly on my third principle of my father who said that we have to be thinking globally and i do not like to say that we have the right to this do this do that so in my view globalization will be back now and there will be a different type of scene what it was uh, when president trump came in he wanted to make us to be the most mightiest and he was not for globalization whereas in my view globalization is the best cure for the world mm -hmm. so things which have happened also have given us lessons that we have to keep on changing our businesses now i think the most things what people have learned they will all be going fast in green sector in renewables on technology on digitization and the style and operations will change now one has to see in what way one is changing if you look at the stock prices and only in the sectors which i have mentioned including the pharma they have been doing very good and it has gone up so 
uh, not only that, uh, COVID-19 has also taught us to be with the family, spend more time with the family, and many people who are not even uh, used to the technology, at least now they can use their computers, they can use their iPhones, they can work on the Zoom, they can do everything from their home. Absolutely. And in terms of speaking about the business, how do you see, other than globalization, how do you see business models and leadership changing um, as we start to move back towards globalization being a positive post-COVID? Let me tell you, in my view, the future is cybersecurity. In all these things, what I mentioned, cybersecurity is important. And in our group, there is a lot of entrepreneurship and we have been ahead in developing uh, 11th vertical of uh, cybersecurity under the name of CyCarex, where we have also collaborated with Tech Mahindra. Uh, and in this way, in our sector, in our businesses, God has helped us enforcing ahead of time what should be done if you look at our history you will be surprised how my late father after a partition was the first one to go to iran how before the revolution 60 days before we left and we made our best base in london how we closed down in Beirut, how we had operations in different countries and very timely we left them. That's really interesting. And to answer your question, the new model will be such that the manufacturing the, will automatically be affected unless they develop them properly. Take, for example, coal-based power stations, they will be converted into renewable energies. For example, uh, petroleum and diesel vehicles, they will be converted into electric vehicles. In this way, in each and every sector, there is going to be a transformation. So the one who can foresee and can take a proper and the right judgment will be ahead of time and will not be affected. And you've spoken about the global uh, experience you have, and you mentioned that part of your philosophy is to act local, think global. With over 150,000 staff and working in multiple sectors around the world, what's your advice for other business people and entrepreneurs about global business? would just give a very simple advice that they should diversify their activities, not be in one sector, not be in one country and should be diversified geographically, diversified in their businesses and also think of the society and to see how they can give away because when we were born we had nothing with us and when we will go from this world we can't take anything with us so it is see we have to do the best to see how we help the world mm -hmm. you have to help the world by either supporting them in health education financially create jobs for them you can each and every country has problems and we have to see where each one of the one who are successful in business can support and help them 
I really love that look at collectively seeking solutions. So how do you think platforms, uh, leadership platforms like the ABLF talks that we've got today, how can they help bring together business people and communities to collectively seek solutions to help rebuild economies and societies? Yeah, I would like to congratulate Malini Menon. Since the last 13, 14 years, I have seen the existence of ABLF and she has really been doing an excellent job with her daughter and she has helped quite a lot UAE by bringing all the support and investors in the country. She has been really a great support to United Arab Emirates and especially my dear friend Sheikh Nayan Al Nayan, who is the patron, and he has also supported this. And I should also tell you that we brothers always like to be a good bridge between the host country and home country. In UAE, we also have a number of verticals. We have manufacturing plants, we have lubricant plant, we have financial sectors. And in this way, what we have been doing is to see in any country we go, again, what best we can do between our home country and the host country. Whether it is UK, India, France, India, UAE, India, we always try to see what best can be done so that it helps the overall globalization. We are strong believers in globalization. And now with the changes which have taken place in US, my strong view is that it will have a great push to globalization and things will start improving better. All what has been lost in the economy are the lives this will be back to normal it may take three to six months but eventually we will be back but the style of operations and dealing in business will have a transformation what are the biggest lessons we can learn around the world from the success of the UAE and its leadership, especially during a crisis? I have been having a commitment with UAE since last, personally, myself, about 65 years. I remember first when I went to Dubai, it was a desert. We hardly had any uh, road with asphalt and even if we had to go from Dubai to Abu Dhabi we used to see the marks of the tires of the car which has gone ahead of us and followed it and now when you see you can see a big difference in my opinion the Emirati people are lucky to have good rulers who have been practical nice and good to everyone I had known very well the ruler of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Zayed, with whom I did a number of activities politically and business. And even now, I have best of the relationship. I have no, uh, nothing too shy to say that because of our commitment in UAE, we, the family has been given the royal degree. What's your vision for the future between the UK and India? Tell you bilaterally, there can't be any better partners between UK and India because the British people understand the Indian traditions, Indian culture. Similarly, Indians, whoever has come to UK, they have helped the economy and the society. And even the bureaucracy in India was left by British people. 
and Indians were talented, they have perfected it and now it becomes more difficult. That is why our Prime Minister Modi has been praising and taking forward ease to do business to see how fast and quick the investors and the foreigners who come there can work. So to answer your question, India, UK can be excellent partners. Already they have good partnership and I think both sides have about 24, 25 billion dollars of trade and investment. But there is a great potentiality between the two countries. And once things are resolved on Brexit, I think India and UK will have much more to do. And speaking about the opportunities, the potential, what are your thoughts as a businessman and global leader about inclusivity and tolerance and the importance of that in working life? Tolerance is not only between the countries. In the humanity, you see, let me tell you, which is what is the best wealth for any human being is the humility. And this humility should be in everyone. And this is what my advice will be to the politicians, to the rulers. You see, our Mahatma Gandhi left very good lessons for us. And if we follow his footsteps, believe me, this world can become paradise and we all can be hmm, happy and having a good life in the world. So. The first step of this is to have globalization, to keep away from the revenges and we have to see what best we can do for all the countries. I am a strong believer on the path of what Mahatma Gandhi has left and this helps the country should tolerate each other it's not that uh, if someone is mighty hmm, should say whatever i am saying is correct we have to think of other countries also and somehow tolerance is a great virtue if the political leaders have it that's really helpful. Thank you. And in terms of looking forward, what do you think 2021 holds for you and the Hinduja group? You see, being very optimistic, I can only say one thing that if our intentions are good, if our karmas are good, we will always keep on moving forward. And especially 2021, definitely will be better than 2020. It may take time. It's not that overnight things will change because there has been an impact of economy in many countries. What do you see the biggest business opportunities and challenges of 2021? Technology businesses. They will do the best. One is technology. Second, I told you about green renewables, electric vehicles. Uh, you see, there is going to be a transformation on overall businesses. So one will have to watch and see how things are moving. What is the impact of vaccines? And somebody says in X vaccine, there is a 95% efficiency. Some say in 74%, 70%. But we have to see exactly what's clear that this is going to help to transform not only the way of working, but also the businesses. And looking forward to 2021 and all the brilliant business opportunities that are coming, what are your thoughts on Dubai Expo 2020? Interesting question. I think Dubai Expo, hmm, will really attract uh, many visitors, many business people, and it is going to be successful. Because even in this time of COVID, 
19 they have been able to handle and manage the situation in a good manner i am optimistic on expo 20. and for the people hoping to follow in the footsteps of you and your brothers what are your advice what advice do you have to offer to future potential business leaders in the uk in the uae in india and globally they have to watch and see how this transformation is taking place and should be able to move fast and quick to change their sectors and not be just stuck to what they are doing they have to see how much transformation is taking place the style of doing business may change the style of going every day to the offices may change but overall if you look technology is something they will have to upgrade themselves in it pg that has been so helpful do you have any last words you'd like to share with our brilliant ablf audience i can only wish them the good luck and i would like to thank malini to invite me and i see a lot of prosperity in future in united arab emirates although they have suffered quite a lot in the economy as well as in the reality businesses but with the policies what they have been bringing in this will help to revive the economy thank you so much wonderful words to end on thank you so much